Hello, my name is I Kinks. Guys, we're back with another video, and SmackDown was kind of good and going to cap on you, but hey, let's get straight into the SmackDown review and highlights. First of all, we had Roman Reigns come out and basically say, you know, <laughs> it, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful promo and a beautiful transition, and it marked exactly who Roman Reigns is. He's a dickhead. So he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Now, not only did he make sense, but he cut a promo saying, why am I not the best champion you face? I should be the number one person you could have came up to. You should be banging down on my feet, exactly. And you should face me, me. I should be the one that you should be begging to fight. And that's true because Edge and Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns did beat Drew McIntyre and NXT is always supposed to be like below. Even though they beat Raw on SmackDown, we always know like Raw, NXT is like below the main roster. That's why they're supposed to work their way up, That's, you know? But Edge didn't even come out. Edge said, what are you talking about? I'm not coming out right now. I'm going to play games with you. And Michael Cole pointed out a good thing. Roman Reigns plays games with his opponents and stuff like that. But if there's anybody that can keep the games up, is one Edge. And it is exactly why wow, that was a good overall segment that was an a plus plus made sense Matt delivery jay uso was also back so you gotta love that next segment and the next segment is going to be dominic mysterio the the young potential uprising star against bear corbin and baron corbin attacks Rey mysterio before and then um, Rey Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio, actually picks up the win, but it's how he picked up the win that pissed me off. First of all, Rey Mysterio went under the ring. Let me let me hear this out. He went under the ring. Rey Mysterio went under the ring, held Baron Corbin down, and somehow the ref didn't see it. Dominic Mysterio six one nine big Baron Corbin and led to the win. Um. First of all, why? I, I've noticed this for some reason. They hype Baron Corbin up like he is a god. Like he is Roman Reigns. Like he is a WWE champion. Baron Corbin gets more protection than Asuka does. And she is the War Woman's champion. That is fucking ridiculous. Just let Baron Corbin win. <laughs> just, just let him get his ass beat. He's not important. I promise you we won't complain if he loses a few matches because it it does it never seems like Baron Corbin loses a match. I swear to God, my guy. I swear to God it never seems like Baron Corbin loses a match. I did not like this segment. Overall, it was a C minus because McDonald's Stereo did get the win. It was just how they got the win. Dominic Stereo can beat Baron Corbin. Please. This is he's the young star. Baron Corbin is a boring mid carter. Stop it. Get some help. Next segment. Now we did. Now we did have a little talk with Bianca Belair in the backstage area saying that she basically is going to make her decision soon. I personally think it's that. Well, I personally think it's okay. I mean, not making her decision soon enough gets more views, gets more ratings, you know, all that good stuff. So overall, A, B plus, I don't know. It was good. It was good. Bianca Belair. I like her. She's she's cool. So it was good. Next seg understand. <clears throat> the next segment we will have Daniel Bryan versus uh Cesaro. It was was really wasn't after that. It, it, it wasn't after this, after the Bianca. It was before the Bianca promo. But I don't know how I forgot it. I actually forgot it. But Cesaro and Daniel Bryan did have a good match, and Cesaro won. I think. Daniel Bryan just went backstage and was like, we should really push Cesaro, put him over me, please, we should have a few matches, he should win, and stuff like that, so WWE is just granting their wishes. Are they planning to do anything with Cesaro in the future? No, he's going to get this little push, they're not going to do anything with him. Of course, I don't want that to happen, but I probably see that's going to happen. Daniel Bryan, I love the effort, but <laughs> you're talking events here. Anyway, next segment. 
Oh, and just before I pass this little segment of Cesaro and Daniel Bryan, Cesaro is basically officially a babyface now. He fist bumped Daniel Bryan after the match and showed his respects. So maybe Cesaro, they are actually trying, but uh, it's Vince. You know, he had, he didn't push him for the first 11 or 10 years. I know he hasn't been in the company for that long, but he didn't push him for the first six or five years. But I just don't trust Vince. Anyway, the next segment will be Liv Morgan, Billy Kay, and... Uh, Ruby Riot. It, the match was Ruby Riot versus Bailey, and Liv Morgan was the, playing the manager role, and Billy Kay was playing her comedy role all the time. I don't understand why Billy Kay is leading to all this bad luck unless they're building up to something. Knowing WWE, they're not. What happened? Billy Kay got into the mix once again and probably led to the I mean and led to the L of Ruby Riot. Bailey gets the dub. I don't understand the reason of having Billy Kay do all this stuff being paired. Look like it's going all well and then they just crush her hope and dreams. It makes me feel sorry for Billy Kay, but if I keep feeling sorry and sorry and sorry for her what is going to be the payoff? It's just, you're just filling me up with sadness and I do not like sadness. I've been sad my whole life. Anyway, next segment. So the next segment will, is automatically going to get a good grade just because Bianca Belair is involved in it. Bianca Belair came to the ring and started to just babble on and basically cut a babyface promo of how she is going to be here and everything like that and it looks like they're really trying to make her into a babyface babyface because they even showed her parents celebrating before they before she came out but she came out it didn't got interrupted by Carmilla's simp boy that basically said hey you're not going to beat Sasha you can't even you can't beat Oscar you're not going to beat Sasha and basically like that and stuff like that I don't know how this would boost up Carmella. Maybe he was just interrupting Bianca just to interrupt Bianca. But he came into the ring and then Carmella followed behind him and stuff like that. They both came in the ring and just started hopping on Bianca Belair. Then Sasha Banks music hit. She came into the ring, started talking all that yapper yapper stuff and basically said, you're the best Bianca. You're the this, you're the all that, but you are not I mean, you're the you're the fastest, you're the strongest, you're the you're all that, but you are not the best, and that's basically what Sasha Banks said, and that should be an interesting narrative carrying on because I know Bianca Belair is going to choose Sasha Banks. I really do hope, but I, I kind of know she's going to choose Bianca Belair. Anyway, that was a good segment, and. <laughs> The set boy got a whooping for opening up his mouth again. He basically said, you can't beat Sasha Banks again. And, oh, he said, you're, you're lucky winning the Royal Rumble. And Bianca Belair just whooped that boy with his hair. Um, yeah, Bianca Belair uh, basically took a, took a throwback to slavery days and just started whooping uh, Carmella's set boy and basically made him out the ring. And Bianca Belair just celebrated as... We still get no answer, but it was a good segment overall. B plus. Anyway, next segment. The next segment will be. Oh, and I also don't know how I missed this, but Shinsuke met with Edge backstage, or Edge just met with Shinsuke, and they just ran by each other. They congratulated each other. They said, "What's up, money?" and everything like that. But I just can't imagine those two in the ring. Maybe they were foreshadowing. I just wanted to point that out. Edge versus Shinsuke would be a hell of a match, probably after he gets the title. But it would be crazy, a crazy of a match, man. And I, I would really enjoy that. Next segment. And the next big thing and our highlight to talk about was Hulk Hogan cutting a so-so promo with Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns talking about Edge and said he was his partner and stuff like that. It was good, good to see Hulk Hogan, I guess. Every time legends just come on, I just, I just, I just don't really care unless it's like really somebody I care for. Anyway. That was it for that one. And then we had a triple threat match between Big E, Sami Zayn, and Apollo Crews. That was the next big event that happened. And Big E picks up the win. It was a good match. Sami Zayn doing his crazy actings and Big E doing his powerful stuff. And it made Apollo Crews look kind of good as well. But I wonder what Roman Reigns' reaction was when he lost the match. Apollo Crews... Um, Got suplexed and I mean got belly to bellied and basically lost the match. Sami Zayn was outside because Apollo Cruz took him out and Biggie retains the Intercontinental Championship. Anyway, the next segment it was a good match, everything, probably one of the best matches on the show. So <laughs> that's a good reason. Anyway, that is probably like an A minor or something like that. 
that is a good match and a good result. Next segment. Edge comes out, he's looking great, he's doing everything, doing blah 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 blah. He goes in the ring and it seems like he's about to choose what he's about to choose. He tells a whole story about his family and stuff like that. And then Roman Reigns music hits. And not only that, but he brings Jay, Al Jay Uso and Paul Heyman with them. And Edge actually points this out. He's like, do you really need backup? I'm I'm like 1,000 years old and you really need backup? Are you serious? Roman Reigns actually has common sense and he backs them up. He tells Paul to get out the ring, also with Jay Uso. And then he talks and he tells Jay, he tells Edge to call me the tribal chief basically and acknowledge me. And Edge doesn't say anything. And at first I'm like, why is he saying anything? He's about to spare him? This dude, Kevin Owens, cannot take an L, bro. This dude, Kevin Owens, came right back, stunned Roman Reigns out of completely nowhere. Roman Reigns is down on the floor, and Edge just has this blank face, <laughs> blank emotion on his face. This dude, Kevin Owens, cannot take an L. I'm getting tired of him. This is annoying. This feud will never, ever end. That's just what it is. Kevin Owens stunned Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns is probably going to get him back for that, and it's going to be another ending loop. Kevin Owens, bro, just take your L. That is SmackDown Review altogether. It was a good show. Main event was kind of lackluster and anticlimactic, but hey, what you going to do? SmackDown was good overall. I'll give it a A- minus overall. No. Actually, no, I'll give it an A. I'll give it an A overall just because of that main event. It was so it was so anticlimactic. I actually thought Edge was about to choose. Anyway, SmackDown review. That is it. SmackDown and highlights. My name is I King Skies. Like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.